Yo, what's going on, rascals? How you doing? I have my coffee right here with me. And of course, very, very happy 2024 to all of you. Uh, this is the first video that I'm recording for 2024. And it's been fun. It's been fun. You know, I've taken a bit of a break. Well, I say break. It took off about four days just uh, chilling, hanging out with the fam and doing all those things. What did you guys do for your New Year's? Did you have a break or have you been working the whole time? Today's video, we're talking not really doing base game or anything of 2023. Instead, because I was watching Charlie, uh, Penguin Z, Moist Critical, whichever you want. I was watching his video yesterday uh, about the base game and movie that came out for 2023. And he was talking, you know, specifically, he was talking about Tears of the Kingdom. But before Tears of the Kingdom... He mentioned Baldur's Gate and how he believes that Baldur's Gate deserves all of the praise that it got. And, you know, he's he's very happy for it. But the game that he had more fun with was Tears of the Kingdom. I'm fully appreciative of that. I've never played Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not really big on the handheld thing. But in what he spoke about, I got this feeling that I wanted to share with all of you, and that is about Baldur's Gate, but we could probably throw in things like Cyberpunk in this conversation as well, because I think 2023 exposed uh, a lot of things that previously we have all thought about. We have all sort of, I guess, it, it, instinctively, we, we've had inklings of this. We've sort of thought maybe this could be the case, but we've never actually known. And 2023 really revealed uh, a lot of sickness within the gaming industry. And specifically, I would argue, Baldur's Gate revealed really the, the biggest sickness within the gaming industry. Now, before we start, let's just get one thing out of the way. Yes, Baldur's Gate is probably the greatest game to have released in video games in 10 plus years. I think the last time we had a game that was this ahead of its time and this perfect would be Red Dead Redemption 2, which also one of my favorite games of all time. Because again, it, it was a game that knew exactly what it wanted to be. It had perfected what it was. And it, it came from a company that had hyper-specialized in that form of video game. Now, I believe that specifically Baldur's Gate 3, but also things like Cyberpunk 2077, have revealed a the first issue that I think has been revealed within the gaming industry very deeply is most gaming companies today aren't specializing. If you go to the big ones, the AAA studios, the vast majority of them, specifically are in the West, tend to, to chase whichever dream will get them to the next billion dollars. And even the ones that do specialize appear to spend most of their energy specializing and figuring out how to monetize their games better rather than actually making better and better games. You think about stuff like Activision and Call of Duty or EA and Battlefield. With how many years and decades they've been working on these games, you would expect the, the games to be just next generation already i mean you, you would expect these games to be completely untouchable to be innovating on the shooting genre pretty much yearly because every developer that works there works there because they love shooting games right why would you go work for activision or go work for ea if you're not going to make shooting games surely it doesn't make sense perhaps the <laughs> the biggest example i have of ea taking a company that hyper-specialized in just one thing and destroyed that company's name would be Bioware and Anthem. Here's a company that hyper-specialized in single-player story RPGs. Very specifically, CRPGs and third-person RPGs. This is what this company has pretty much always been known for with the Mass Effect and the Baldur's Gate series and then the Dragon Age series on top of that. And then you give this company a new game and you say, hey, we would instead want, we want you to make a live action server, a live service game. This is, this is what we think is going to sell base now. It didn't work. It completely fell flat because, again, most of these AAA studios don't give a crap about specialization or actually becoming better at what they do. 
They care about how can we monetize better what we do. But that's not actually the big thing. I know this has been one hell of an intro, but that's not actually the big thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys today. No, it's actually more how developers have been exposed thanks to Baldur's Gate and games like Cyberpunk. Around the time that Baldur's Gate released, we saw a lot of developers come out of the woodwork and basically instantly be like, uh, people should not expect this level of game from every game. People should not expect this. The, most companies don't have these resources, and most companies can absolutely never achieve what Baldur's Gate has achieved. Okay, let's let's look at the resources that Larian Studios has at their beck and call. I guess you could say uh, budget. Do you think who has a bigger budget, Activision, EA, Blizzard, or Larian? The answer is Activision, EA, or Blizzard, not Larian. Uh, who do you think has more developers? Again, the answer is not Larian. Uh, who do you think has the most resources, not money, but resources in general, to throw at making video games? Again, the answer would absolutely not be Larian Studios. Remember, Larian Studios is still an independent studio. They make their own games. They pay for their own games. They're a small studio. They're much larger than most. They're not, look, they're not an indie developer, but they are an, an independent video game developer insofar as they don't work with a massive publisher. They don't get massive publishing money. They, they, they just have passion. And that's really the only metric where Larian Studios is destroying the other gaming industries uh, or the other gaming companies is passion. They have actual passion for what they do and they hyper specialize in that. And everyone that works there works there because this is the only thing they want to do. They have dreamt about making CRPGs their entire lives and now they finally get to make it with Larian Studios. The fact of the matter is, Baldur's Gate, there will not be another Baldur's Gate, probably until Rockstar releases GTA 6 or Red Dead Redemption 3 or Larian Studios comes out with another video game. The developers of the gaming industry have exposed themselves. They have exposed their own uh, greed, but also their own laziness. And when I say developer, I really do mean developer and suit interchangeably here because it wasn't the executives at these studios that were coming out and saying, well, you can't expect games like this from us. It was the developers. It was developers at Blizzard and Activision that, that came out saying, oh, I'm not saying this because I hate Baldur's Gate. I'm saying this because I love the game, but I also want to set expectations. The expectations you're trying to manage, uh, you they masked by saying, well, we no one has the resources of the time that Larian Studios have, but that's not true. I can show you on paper that Activision, EA, Ubisoft, uh, uh, Blizzard, on paper, these companies could probably, like one of these companies is probably worth five or six times that of Larian. They could buy Larian and, you know, not even break a sweat. So these companies have a lot of resources. The only resource that these companies don't have that Larian seems to have in spades it maybe grows there or something, I don't know, is passion. Larian has passion. Their developers are passionate about what it is they make. You know, and, and they took it with so much grace. They, they never pointed fingers at any of the other studios. While studios were absolutely clapping at them, they never clapped back. They allowed their game to do the heavy lifting. And that's what I want to talk about today. I mean, I've been talking about it the whole time. If you haven't noticed, I think Baldur's Gate has exposed the video game industry and probably it's it's sort of uh, rung true most of my fears and i'm assuming most of yours as well because for the for a long time now i've had this weird inkling this weird feeling that the video game industry is doomed <laughs> it, it feels like it to be fair it feels a little doomed and I think Baldur's Gate 3 just revealed how doomed it is. Uh, and I throw Cyberpunk into this mix because Cyberpunk launched not great. 
the opposite of Baldur's Gate 3, really, where Baldur's Gate 3 launched perfectly and since then has just become better and better. Cyberpunk launched absolutely miserably and it took a lot of time and a lot of money, I believe 168 million US dollars in order to get the game perfect. In fact, uh, CD Projekt Red lost money on, Bo uh, on Cyberpunk 2077. But again, uh, the reason I'm bringing up this company do you see any AAA studio ever spending that amount of cash fixing a game? I would remind you, Anthem was supposed to be fixed, and EA just went, nah, fuck it. We give up. It's fine. We'll just cancel this game and on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> it will never happen. Uh, do you imagine Ubisoft will fix something like Far Cry 6? Nah. It's fine as it is, even though it wasn't the greatest. We'll just try it with Far Cry 7. Who knows? Maybe people will come back in Far Cry 7, even though they didn't come back for Far Cry 5. Is it 5 or 6 now, the newest one? I don't know. Uh, whichever one. The guy from uh, the, the guy on the front cover with his son, the dictator, uh, that, that played the guy that got blown up in uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, I don't know. I, I played it for about four hours, and, and then I was bored out of my mind when I realized it's basically just the same thing over and over again. But yeah, uh, the fact of the matter is these companies don't spend money on fixing their games and that's because money is power and money is everything. The reason they do what they do is money. They, they, they're, don't, they're not doing what they're doing because they love you and me. Uh, you'd be a moron if you actually thought that that was the case. They do what they do because they want to get paid and it shows and it scares me because... 2024 has a lot of really good games on the horizon, and there's a lot of games that I'm really looking forward to. But what if... What if Baldur's Gate 3 and the reaction that Baldur's Gate 3 got, what if that is indicative of what future games are going to look like? What if 90% of all the games that come out in the future absolutely blow dick and that's just what we should get used to. I don't know. Fuck it. I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to go finish my coffee, watch some football highlights, because why wouldn't I? And I'll see you guys later. Peace.